Hi, my name is Stephanie Perrin. I'm a board certified behavior analyst at Brett Novi and Associates. And today I want to talk with you about the adaptability of the functional analysis. Oliver Pratt and Norman in 2015 surveyed BCBAs and it was reported that 62.3% never or almost never used an FA in practice, despite 77% of those surveyed reporting that it was emphasized during training. However, 91% of those individuals indicated that they almost always used a descriptive analysis. These are the task list topics that will be covered. So what does a functional analysis mean? It doesn't just mean Awada and colleagues FA with the four conditions. In Skinner's Science and Human Behavior, he describes that any manipulation that you conduct to identify a functional relationship is a functional analysis. So why should you conduct an FA? Well, when you know why the behavior is occurring, you can tailor your replacement behaviors, reduce the components in the plan, and you also demonstrate the analytic dimension of ABA. So since 1953, when Skinner published his book, Science and Human Behavior, numerous studies were published that detailed procedures for identifying functional relationships of problem behavior. In 1982, Awada and colleagues synthesized these conditions, which many of you refer to as the standard or analog FA. FAs have been conducted with individuals with and without intellectual and developmental disabilities, brain injuries, and also target different types of behaviors, not just problem behaviors, also appropriate behavior, such as task completion. So why aren't practitioners conducting FAs? Some of the concerns include space is limited. They don't have the time. The fact that it's not what they see when they're observing their clients. Their client might have a problem with discrimination. The behavior is a very high intensity or occurs infrequently. And others talk about the lack of training. So the lack of training is definitely a valid reason for not conducting a functional analysis. However, you need to be trained and acquire this skill and begin conducting those FAs in practice. Research has shown that functional analyses can be conducted anywhere. They've been conducted in hospitals, outpatient clinics, residential vocational settings, in the home, school, empty classrooms, and during class. Bloom and colleagues in 2011 conducted trial-based FAs during class, and this assessment was a variation of Sigafus and Sager's 1995 procedures. Time constraints is another area of concern. Northup and colleagues in 1991 conducted a brief functional analysis. This is where they had shorter sessions and only repeated one or two of the conditions that they were elevated. So in 1999, Kong and Awada and Wallace and Awada looked at the number of cycles that were conducted as well as the session length. Their research demonstrated that you should run multiple cycles of shorter sessions to get the valid data. And also, if you suspect a single function of the problem behavior, then only conduct a single test. So let's talk about the research that was conducted where they designed the experimental conditions based on what was occurring in the settings when they were observing their clients. So some of the things that they looked at were the different antecedents. You know, how did they manipulate those establishing operations? Some of the researchers arranged the conditions in a fixed order to maximize those EOs or those care, that carryover effect. They withheld access to potential reinforcers prior to sessions. When it came to social positive reinforcement, other individuals looked at divided attention or the client was okay when the caregiver or therapist was present, but once they left the room, that's when the problem behavior occurred. They also looked at manipulating other variables when it came to social negative reinforcement. So some of the task parameters were modified were the difficulty, the novelty, the duration of the session, as well as the rate of presentation. And they also looked at other aversive stimuli such as noise, meals, and escaping social interactions. Other researchers also looked at your different reinforcers and they manipulated the quality and the type. So peer versus adult attention, the specific form of verbal reprimand, animated or physical attention, and also was it short or longer access, which was the maintaining variable. Smith, Lerman, and Awada in 1996 looked at access to self-restraint as the reinforcer for problem behavior. And then still again, other researchers have shown that the presence or absence of idiosyncratic stimulus variables alter the outcome of the conditions, and therefore you need to incorporate these into your conditions. So some of the concerns about the behaviors of high intensity, researchers have looked at measuring response latency or precursor behaviors. Also, if behaviors occur infrequently, you can extend your sessions or wait for the behavior to occur. And lastly, some of the concerns is the fact that an individual may not discriminate the different conditions. 
Well, some of the different options are change your design of your conditions using a reversal or a pairwise. You could also associate conditions with different rooms, different therapists, or different stimuli, such as everybody wears blue during the escape condition. So I hope you're seeing a theme here, variations and the flexibility of the functional analyses. Make sure you're taking a look at these when you are conducting your functional analyses. If you are a practitioner and you have not conducted an FA, I encourage you to obtain the skills and experience necessary to conduct them in your practice. And if you are conducting functional analyses, I encourage you to assist others to gain this skill. Please like and subscribe to our channel. I look forward to reading your comments and learning about future topics that you're interested in viewing on our channel.